join us. Join us. Join us for Azure Cosmos DB Conf 2023 on March 28th. Streaming live along with exclusive on-demand sessions. Learn about the latest and greatest of what's coming to Azure Cosmos DB. And get a sneak peek at what members of the community are building. You don't want to miss it. Register with the link below. We're excited to see you there. My favorite thing about Azure Cosmos DB is it empowers developers to do more with less. My favorite thing about Azure Cosmos DB is its ability to scale out to any size. So I don't have to worry about spikes across my usage. It's fully managed with automatic updates and patching. You can work with both relational and non-relational workloads. My favorite thing about Azure Cosmos DB is the five nines of availability that gives me peace of mind my apps will be up. My favorite thing about Azure Cosmos DB is the backing of one of the most comprehensive SLAs in the industry. Azure Cosmos DB is compatible with open source database like PostgreSQL, MongoDB, and Cassandra. I don't have to set up replication on my own. It just works. There are SDKs for different programming languages like C Sharp, Java, Python, and more. So join us at the link below. See you at the Azure Consumer DB Conference 2023. We're excited to see you there. I think we got it. Hey, folks, welcome. Uh, Azure Cosmos DB Live TV. Hope uh, you enjoyed our little promo roll in there. Uh, I'm your host, Mark Brown, and I've got with me an old friend, Glenn Colbert. How are you, sir? Hi, Mark. I'm 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 doing fine. Uh, how about you? I, I love good. the uh, love the video of the Cosmos DB comp. So really looking forward to that. This is uh, I'm really excited too. You know, my favorite thing about Azure Cosmos DB is it keeps me gainfully employed and out of trouble. Uh, <laughs> That's a mostly very good of, reason. Mostly out of trouble. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. This is our uh, our third one, uh, and uh, I'm you know I'm excited. Uh, it gets bigger and better every year. Um, Absolutely. So lots of good stuff. How you been? Yeah, I've I've been uh, I've been pretty busy uh, doing some some cool projects with uh, with Azure Cosmos DB and and with cognitive services, and this is what we're. Uh, going to talk about today so really excited to to share some of the insights that uh, that I've been uh, seeing and, and hearing this is great uh, I uh, I love kind of talking about things like this where you're joining things like your services like cosmos with with other services uh, and especially Azure uh, cognitive search uh, it really provides a lot of a lot of cool uh, features and benefits uh, on top of a database like Cosmos. And I like the the integration uh, is actually pretty slick uh, with it as well. Um, yeah, and, is also and we'll show the integration somewhere later uh, during this show where I will show you how you can seamlessly integrate both services together and, and create that uh, semantic search experience. So that will be great, I hope. No, I think it'll be great. So I think you got some slides uh, you Absolutely. wanted to kind of kick us off with, and then uh, get to see some seat in action here too, right? Yeah. So we live like uh, in a reality where 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 data is being generated at at a constant pace. Pace. So there's there's a, a study of Forbes that that recently came out, and the numbers of of bytes uh, of new data per day is around two point five quintillion. You want to take a guess how many zeros that is? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a it's a it's a two with like thirty zeros and, wow, and okay. <laughs> yeah. So and and most uh, in businesses we we see that most of that data is is coming in in unstructured formats. Think about uh, PDFs, uh, images, scans, and 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 so on. So. Uh, in that same study, again, um, the the estimated uh, amount of unstructured data is 80%. And therefore, as a result, um, its internal decision takes longer, are less informed, and, and a lot of work needs to be done manually. And uh, yeah, you all know, and, and we all know that information can become an asset or a burden, depending on, on, on how you use it. So... Um, in our case, um, we um, we combined the power of um, Azure Cosmos DB with cognitive search, and basically this is what we're going to talk about today. 
So I'm I'm going to to talk a bit on on the scenario. So the scenario is inspired from from a le- real life use case that we're working on, and in that data platform that is was situated in the logistic chain, um, data comes in mostly in stru- unstructured format, things of PDFs, uh, scans, uh, and so on, and. Um, there we used the the power of of uh, azure cognitive search to extract or to do ocr classification on that data to extract information uh, on top of that to make it a more uh, a bit more uh, fun or less uh, boring than supply chain i took like the um, a data set that i found and this is the data set that contains the top 10 movies of over the last 100 years. So with that, what I did is um, I've uploaded the metadata to uh, Azure Cosmos DB and uploaded the images uh, into a blob storage. What I did is um, with some uh, function integration, I triggered um, Azure Cognitive Services to do indexing and OCR classification on top of that data. So you will see in later in, in the show that uh, basically Azure Cognitive Search will start analyzing that data. It will extract celebrities from it. It will extract text from it. Basically, it will start enriching our uh, original data with, uh, with data from the image itself. So, so what as you enter is, uh, files in here, you can just continue re-indexing, right? Each time, is it, it doesn't rebuild the index from scratch uh, no. necessarily. It just basically just continues to build on it, uh, it uh, each time. There, right? Absolutely, it it re-triggers the index, and it will just basically discover if there's new files, yes or no, and then um, based on that, he will uh, add um, additional files to that index. And, and basically uh, the service on itself knows if there's new files. Um, there's also a tracking that you can do uh, to remove files from your index once oh, really? they're deleted uh, and so on. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. great. So once we've done that, we've we've put that enriched uh, document with the OCR. We've updated our re- original data uh, with the OCR data and then made it available for a search engine. But let's um, talk about uh, that more in details during the demos. Okay. So a couple of learnings today. So we'll talk about Azure Cosmos DB, uh, talk about how the data enrichment and indexing works, and then we'll we'll launch some queries on, on Azure Cognitive Search um, and have a clear separation or a clear ID on when to use or to combine the power of Azure Cosmos DB with uh, Azure Cognitive Search. So let's uh, first of all talk about Azure Cosmos DB because this plays a, a, a big part within that, uh, within that solution. And you've probably shown this slide already a thousand times on the show, right, Mark? So uh, um, I don't know about this slide in particular, but I think most of this stuff I, I say or guests say when they're on there. So yes, yeah. So uh, and and this is uh, some of the reasons why um, uh, Azure Cosmos DB is is one of one of my my favorite services. It's 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 basically um, your 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 go to database when you do uh, modern application development. So it allows you to. Uh, use um, different kind of APIs, uh, different kind of uh, models, uh, and so on. So it's it basically makes data available where the users are um, within uh, within a single digit millisecond response time. So it's 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 a really cool service. And and um, yeah, let's. Um, but one of the key um, key things within uh, Azure Cosmos DB and probably this has been already talked about a lot during the show, is is partitioning. So partitioning is the um, is necessary to uh, optimize both your reads and writes. Uh, 
it doesn't impact that much when you are at at low amount of data, but it really becomes uh, critical the more you scale and the more um, the larger your data set is. This is because um, your data is then being spread to more physical partitions and, and servers. So a physical partition is just SSD storage and compute. Uh, and you, as a user of Azure Cosmos DB, um, are unable to control that physical partition. It basically is Mark who's controlling that. So it's the, the internal implementation of the system and managed by, uh, managed by Cosmos DB itself. So it's basically more important um, to focus on the logical partition. And the logical partition is a, all the data that share the same partition key. And really, it's super important to take that partition key uh, into account. So when we uh, take a look at our, our movies, you will see that um, we have chosen to partition the movies on release year. You will see here that uh, all the partitions uh, based on release years are divided among more physical uh, partitions. So, and if we zoom in a bit uh, more uh, in details, so it is important to choose that correct partition key for your data and really start testing the most used requests, uh, think about creates, writes, gets, and so on. You really need to find the correct balance and uh, avoid hotspots or uh, hot partitions. So in our case, as, <clears throat> as sorry. said, <clears throat> yeah, sorry, Mark. <laughs> Just clearing my throat. Okay, no worries. Thought you had a question. <laughs> um, so in our case, we... Um, as mentioned during during the start of this show, we we have the top ten movies of the last one hundred years. So picking the partition key was 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 pretty straightforward. So we choose uh, release here. So we had an evenly distributed amount of of documents within our partition, um, and as you can see here in this in in, in this image. Is that true? Do, uh, do, uh, kind of one of the questions I have is uh, about the data itself is, uh, is there roughly the same amount of movies released each year over 100 years? Yeah, uh, it, it's the top 10 movies that 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 or were that were in the data set. Oh, okay, so the top 10 movies over the last 100 years. Yeah, absolutely. Got it. Okay, so guaranteed to be the same. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the other thing too is, uh, and I this is, I frequently see people do this, is uh, they they want to use time as a partition key. And depending on the use case, I tell them it's either a good idea or a bad idea. In this case here, this is a read heavy workload. So you're not going to worry about hot partitions on the right path because there's just, mm -hmm. you're not writing that much data. And obviously yeah. if it's only 10 movies a year, that's definitely not that much data, uh, but you're going to read, you're going to query it quite often. And I'm guessing uh, like you were saying here, your, your frequent query is going to be one that's going to do it by year, right? Or at least include a year uh, as part of that, right? Yeah, it's it it will include the year. For example, yeah, give me the ten top movies of of my year of birth, for example. Yeah. So that 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 was that was one of the the queries. But on the other hand, uh, and and this is uh, where partitioning comes into play. If you would um, partition them by by genre, you would see a whole different. Uh, a whole different pattern. You would, you would see um, action, uh, action movies being really popular. Uh, a lot of movies would would end up in the in that bucket, and then uh, probably none or none movie would end up in the western uh, thing. So, in 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 our case, in this in this scenario, if we if we would have chosen um, a genre. Uh, then action would be what is so-called a, a hot partition. And um, that could really, at scale, uh, influence the performance of your, uh, of your Azure Cosmos DB. So um, with that said, uh, uh, some things, uh, some other things on, on, on querying. So um, if you are designing your, your application, 
or your um, or your um, Azure Cosmos DB uh, um, databases. So consider co-location of, of 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 entities. So so really try to optimize and minimize that 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 query scope. And it's sometimes it's better to just store um, whole documents or results that that you expect from within your application. It's better to do like uh, one read from a, a, a bigger like a bigger document than having uh, to work in a too chatty way with with your uh, with your database. So it's better to hold to store those those whole results um, uh, when necessary. However, always take into account make sure that your documents are are not becoming too big because also that. Uh, will uh, influence your your performance, and of course, um, think about indexing, uh, sorting, filtering. You will see later during the demo what an impact that um, partition key combination and indexes could have on the um, the request of that you're doing to to Azure Cosmos DB, and. Uh, as mentioned uh, during the beginning, um, Azure Cognitive Search is there for your complex query needs. We will also show that um, during the demo, where um, when you're just querying your Cosmos DB, you know what to query, then everything goes fine. But if you need more complex queries, you need more a semantic search on top of your Cosmos DB data, then things starts to get tricky. And this is where uh, Azure Cognitive Search comes into play for your, uh, this is the, the sweet spot, let us say, um, uh, for that. Like that, this full text <laughs> query kind of uh, scenario that you're, I think, alluding to uh, as well, right? Where um, you basically want to search across a whole bunch of words or whatever like that. And you don't know where they are. That that whole free query, free text yeah. or full text query uh, kind of scenario. Yeah. For example, I, I want, uh, and, and I will show that later, I, I want movies with, with alien monsters and, and, and battleships, for example. Um, <laughs> that will be a, an extremely difficult query to build up uh, against, against, um, against Cosmos DB. And, and you can simply do that within, within uh, cognitive search. And basically, combining those two really gives you... Um, yeah, gives you great power within or search capabilities within your within your application. So, and there's one thing that that I, I do want to mention uh, again to like on 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 the querying part of of site. It's it's better than than to to duplicate your data so, sometimes or or store them twice with a different partition key because. Storing data is is much cheaper than than compute when it comes to um, your applications. Uh, so that's that's uh, one thing I, I often mention to like um, to like customers or it's it's okay to like have your data duplicated or uh, in another way or uh, combined uh, with with other documents to really just to optimize and minimize that 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 query scope that you're doing uh, against um, against your database. Yep. So with that said, let's uh, talk a bit on cognitive services. So uh, cognitive services so are a, a cloud-based service that uh, encapsulate AI capabilities. Um, you can see that as a um, a set of individual services or a set of APIs that you can use to like building blocks to create your intelligent uh, application. Um, it can do uh, language processing, speech processing, uh, and so on. So based on that, there's a, a couple of services that are called or branded Azure Applied AI Services. And those are a, like a combination of uh, the underlying building blocks already pre-made for you. So there's the, the Azure Video Analyzers, there's the, 
there's Azure Cognitive Search, Form Recognizer. Uh, both of those uh, packaged services are a, a combination of the building blocks uh, above. As a developer, you can basically choose with what you want to interact. You want to work directly with the building blocks, with the <coughs> APIs that are made available. That's perfectly fine. You want to use the, um, the packed solution like we did, like we will use uh, today. You can uh, use uh, cognitive search uh, for that. So it's basically uh, what you want, what you need for your your uh, application. So um, Azure Cognitive Search it provides uh, semantic search, it provides uh, proximity search, it gives you cognitive skills. Uh, you can uh, query on on synonyms and so on. So it it really gives you that. Um, Search uh, search experience that you would uh, you would expect from a, a search engine. So and Azure Cognitive Search is basically all about just making search uh, intelligent, and I, I, we've briefly touched upon that. It's if you do a traditional search um, and you do uh, things like uh, movies with uh, with monsters and aliens, then it will. Yeah, just uh, search it, and and um, if you don't have much uh, AI data or OCR data, it will just give you the results on on the metadata. But with uh, with AI powered search or with cognitive services, you can start enriching that data. You can um, start adding tags to the document. He uh, the poster, if you uh, upload the poster, he will recognize celebrities. He will add um, things that he sees in the, in, in the images and, and so on. And that really gives you a more uh, semantic search on top of your data. So it's, it's, it really feels a more natural way of, of searching within, uh, within that data. And that enrichment is what we call um, knowledge mining. So in our case, with cognitive services, he will um, add, um, apply OCR, do language detection, and so on and so on. So there's a couple of core components when it comes to uh, cognitive search. There's your data source, indexer, and index, but we will um, see them uh, in the demo uh, later. So, and based on the index, so your index is your uh, key point uh, of entry and there you can have you have different kind of feature it allows you to uh, to um, specify on what uh, fields you can uh, aggregate on what fields you can sort on what uh, fields you can filter and so on um, So, and if we take everything that we just saw and um, make like a, a pipeline out of it. So what happens is you provide data to Azure Cognitive Search. Um, the data will go through a document cracking and, and field extraction. So um, he the, the service will uh, extract data from it. Uh, it <coughs> will do uh, some AI enrichment on it. It will... It will check uh, the image and so on. And then the results of it will be stored in the index. That's where the tokenization index... goes on right there, right? Where it's cracking open the document and then doing the extraction. It's basically yeah. tokenizing everything inside there so it can be searched, right? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Yep. And then he will the, the service will add everything to the index. And then you can add the, uh, you can start uh, querying that, that, uh, that index. Yep. So... I think I've 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 talked enough. Uh, what do you think? Uh, yeah, will... let's do demos. I like code. yeah. So yeah, our yeah. viewers, they like code too. Well, yeah. hopefully they they're watching this show. Hopefully they like code. So yeah, let's see it. Let's see. So um, let's first of all um, talk a bit on. Um, let me jump into uh, Cosmos DB. Let me first of all. Um, jump back to, to what we've mentioned on the importance of, um, 
of having the correct partition key, having the correct um, um, uh, indexes, and, and so all applied. So you probably know when when doing a, a query to to Cosmos D, to Azure Cosmos DB, um, the cost to do a, a read or a write or or a query will be expressed in RU, so in request units. Um, and it's important to to keep to have that amount as as low as possible in order to to have that cheap as possible uh, query. So next to the list of um, top ten movies that are is stored in 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 this um, in this uh, container, you will see here that I have two additional um, additional other ones, and those are really um, a full extraction of the the IMDb database. Uh, so I think there's uh, a couple of million records in here. Um, but what I've did is I've, um, if we take a look at the item here, <clears throat> you will see that uh, the partition key for those two sets of data are a bit different. In this case, I've um, I've partitioned on 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 main main genre, and in this uh, this one, I've partitioned on release year. So remember, there's a couple of millions uh, of, of movies in this one and uh, different partition key. Uh, some of the indexes were applied a bit differently. And I would just like to show you the result of um, a similar query. So if I launch this one here on, uh, on let me first of all launch, launch it over here on release year. So what I will do is I will uh, select, I will make any typos here. Let's take my year of birth. So let's let me launch that that query over here. So I get the result back. And from a query statistics, I can see that the request charge is um, around 5.7 uh, request units. So if I go, let me just simply copy paste this one. I hope this was fine. Go to this one. Remember, I'm now querying the, um, the other database, um, the, the other collection. And you can see here uh, that with the other um, partition key, uh, other indexes applied, you will see here that my request unit is uh, pretty pretty higher. So uh, this just to show um, what impact that a correct um, partition key strategy or indexing strategy can have uh, on the the performance of, of, of your database. So let's uh, now uh, jump to our collection where, uh, where we have our data that is um, enriched with, um, with OCR data from the images. You can see here, um, let me just, uh, so we have, uh, Captain America Winter Soldier um, from, from Marvel. And you can see here that um, there has been uh, image content being added, image tags. So these tags all have been added by, by, cognitive, uh, by Azure Cognitive Search. There has been some uh, image uh, phrases uh, and so on. So um, what I want to do in this case, um, so imagine that I want to do a simple query where, like, I want to get um, I want to get uh, the movies from uh, just from from Marvel Studio. If I apply that, 
I, so I should type where. That's better. So you can see here that I, I just uh, queried all the uh, movies from, uh, from, from Marvel Studio, and that was a pretty easy query. So um, again, when doing point queries or uh, querying uh, documents that are, uh, those queries are, 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 pretty, are pretty simple. So, but in the case that you want to uh, start launching more um, more complex queries, for example, let's let's go back to our example where I want to um, want to have movies with monsters and aliens. Um, and yeah, where do I start? So I have um, I have a title like okay. So I probably have monsters somewhere in the title or monster. Let's do monster. Um, yeah, or I can have probably aliens in the, in the title, um, like alien. So, um, so I get movies with monsters and aliens, but I also want to like, make sure that if there are any images with aliens or monsters and not only in the title, I want to start capturing those as well. Or And then I have to start building um, more complex queries like uh, array contains. Uh, and, and you see where this is going, right, Mark? Sure. So, I mean, you're already doing full scan right there with those like expressions. So you're you're already not using the index. Uh, uh, that you've 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 got in there. Uh, so <laughs> this is already a pretty expensive query, I'm sure. Yeah, and and you see this this also doesn't feel feel natural. So imagine that a user comes into your application, said, "Oh, movies with monsters and aliens." Try translating that to a query, and and if you have uh, um, the entire IMDb uh, database um, there, you will start. Uh, querying through millions of documents. And then, uh, as you said, it will become a, a, a pretty complex uh, query. And expensive. Yeah. Uh, the solution for that is um, Azure Cognitive Search. And uh, let us let us jump to that one. I hope this is uh, very good. And let me just uh, go to the process of of setting uh, setting up an index where we can start using that index for more uh, the semantic uh, semantic search on top of our data. So let's uh, first of all, you need to connect to your data. So you click on import. I've already prepared the data source. So in our case, let's uh, go with uh, with the movies. Next thing you can do is you can add cognitive skills. Um, this is an optional step. Uh, in our case, uh, our document is already enriched with, with those cognitive skills. But if you take a look at, um, at what's possible, you can see here that you can extract people's names, you can extract location, key phrase, you can even detect language. And if you want, you can even start translating that text uh, uh, and so on. So in our case, uh, we have that uh, um, that information already in, in, into our document, and so let's uh, let's skip to our uh, customizing our our index. So you give it a name, and then you want to make sure that um, these things uh, are retrievable. So that means that you can. Uh, you get them in the result of your document. You want to make sure that you can uh, search on them. Um, and uh, some of these things you definitely want to want to want to filter on. For example, let's let's maybe filter on uh, on IMDB rating um, and and so on. So next thing you do is a hit create the index. And then, what you need to do is create an indexer. And an indexer is basically a, a scheduler that um, runs once hourly, daily, or, or on, on your desired interval. And that will go into your, um, will go 
on top of your data, see if there's new data available um, and start adding the new data to your to your index or removing it from your uh, from your index uh, if necessary. So the thing earlier you were showing where you could add new content, new blobs, new whatever, and then basically you were re-triggering this thing every single time, right? So this thing can run on a schedule or it can be triggered as well? Uh, yeah, so there's a, a, an API uh, behind that where you can um, trigger that uh, indexer uh, uh, when 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 you want. So in our case, what we've done is when we see new data coming in, we um, we talk to the API uh, of of uh, cognitive search uh, with with the uh, available SDKs, of course. And then we just manually trigger that that re-indexing because we know there's new data in. So we we don't want to like wait uh, for the next uh, schedule interval to to pop up. Got it. Okay. So let's hit submit. And uh, if all goes well, this is a live demo. So I see a green check mark. So this is good. So if we go to the indexer. And you can immediately see that um, he succeeded in adding like 401 documents to my index. So this is already um, showing that um, that index uh, will have some, some data in, into it. So let's go to our newly created index. Don't know why this uh, has zero, but let's go and try it anyway. And if we hit search here, just without any... Um, with any query string, you will see that um, there's there's data in, into it. And let us now like do the same thing that we've um, we've tried to do uh, directly on 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 top of uh, Azure Cosmos DB. Is let's do a more semantic search. So I want uh, movie movies with monsters and aliens, and see what comes back here. Let's hit the search. You, you see that Monsters University come back. Um, uh, interview with the vampire. Again, there's no way I could have uh, found that um, this, um, this movie with a query on Monsters and Aliens. Because in the title, there's no, um, no reference uh, to it and so on. So this provides a, 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 a more, um, um, more added uh, yeah, semantic search on top of your data. And what also is possible if we scroll a bit up, you can start um, uh, adding like, uh, you can do a count uh, equals true, for example, allowing you to see how many results uh, you get back you can, uh, if uh, this uh, query string also uh, allows you to, okay, I only want to have the, the title in there. If you hit search, the result will only contain, uh, contain the title. Um, like, um, I think we, we've added a filter on, on IMDB rating, if I'm not mistaken, IMDB rating. So imagine I want movies with monsters and aliens that have an IMDb rating that's greater than 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 80. Let's hit search on that one. Uh, as you can see, uh, if all goes well, you can see that. Where is that here? You can see that we're uh, yeah only get the ones back that have that uh, filtering uh, applied. So. <clears throat> When you're doing so, you're doing searches here, you're in the portal. This is basically so search is returning the entire document, right? So it's basically ingesting and storing the entire document. I mean, indexed, ingested, indexed, and storing the yep. entire document. So I query here. I'm getting. I'm basically using this as my query front end, and basically it's the data store for the data that's coming back. Is there anything that's going back to Cosmos to pull data out of this, or it's all basically offloaded into search now? It's all basically offloaded uh, into this um, to this one. Okay. So, is there a, a need then once you've got this index to go back to Cosmos, or do you have a scenario where 
you maybe use this as kind of your free text or your your search uh, engine, but then can link back and pull uh, other d documents out of Cosmos, maybe stuff that's not indexed. Is there is that a scenario that people do, and, and I guess why would they do that? I I, I can imagine that. Um if you have bigger documents or, or documents linked that you could use um, Azure Cognitive Search to, to query like the top document and then go back to Cosmos once you know which, which exact point you need to hit, then you go back to, to Azure Cosmos DB to, to filter out the underlying uh, documents that you need. So And this, uh, this service will also uh, go back within the indexer to... To make sure that um, if uh, if there's documents uh, documents edited in, in in Azure Cosmos DB, if there's documents deleted, um, this service will go back and fetch that updates to make sure that this um, this query this this basically view on top of Azure Cosmos DB keeps uh, keeps up to date because you definitely don't want to have that that mis mismatch uh, between. How does it handle deletes? I mean, we don't like today for users that want to track deletes, you got to use a tombstone, right? You, you do a soft delete in there. Yeah, absolutely. Do you, do you need to do the same thing with cognitive search or yeah. you do? Okay. Yeah. So, um, and I've, I've uh, ran quickly over that uh, due to time constraints, constraints, but it's, it really works with the, with uh, with soft delete. So once you define your your index or your data source here, you need to specify okay what field within uh, within uh, within Azure Cosmos DB is um, is managing my 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 delete state or or is what fields um, shows what uh, when a document is deleted. Got it. So there's a way you you basically can trigger yeah. so you can track it. How and, about and uh... Sorry, just more and more questions. <laughs> no, no worries. When I query and pull data back out of Cosmos, I will typically deserialize that into a into a structure, an object, a class of some sort. Do, can I do the same thing with Azure Cognitive Search here? Uh, do I need to modify my my data models to accommodate this? I see you've got an O data context and then a value within here. Is there? Do I need to modify that in some ways to deserialize that data into my my Pocos or whatever that I'm that I may be using. Um, there's some some additional uh, things that are being added. So the the um, the data contract will be slightly different. For example, you will see here that the search core uh, will be returned. So that's a, a difference that will um, will be added to your uh, to your data coming back. So there's a, there's a slight difference uh, in, in in data contracts. Uh, but uh, the fields that um, that are here uh, represent the fields that we've added uh, into our index. So, uh, so I can I can uh, show show you that here. So this is basically all the fields that come back from your data uh, from your data within within Cosmos DB, and you can choose to uh, leave some some of these things out. Uh, so. Uh, I would definitely uh, take into account that that difference between those those data contracts are possible because you can uh, you can choose uh, to not return uh, some of the fields within within your your cognitive search. Right, right, right. Okay, so that makes sense for the retrievable. That's what's going to come back. Uh, yeah. You opt to not. I don't know why, but maybe you choose opt or opt not to uh, include. Uh, properties within that, then of course your the data that's returned back uh, and its structure is going to be different. Uh, and I'm guessing here, like before, you were showing cross partition queries and how expensive they could be. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing here it doesn't even care, does it? Sorry, could you repeat? I, I didn't it doesn't. Uh, search doesn't care if it's cross partition no, or not. There is no absolutely not. No, right? It doesn't care. So, so when you when you're querying search, you're basically querying the the index within uh, within Azure Search itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Uh, more questions. Uh, if I'm using this in, say, my my C sharp or Java application mm -hmm. or Spring or something like that, uh, do I've got to do I have to do basically plain old REST calls to, to interact with uh, cognitive services, or is there a uh, like a is there like a convenience layer SDK library or something that I can 
uh, import and use to interact with this thing? Absolutely, and and okay. you caught you caught me a bit on surprise with this one. Uh, I I didn't I don't have Visual Studio open with with uh, with with that stuff, but there's definitely a an, an SDK uh, NuGet packages that you can use, and what you need to do is you need to just provide the name of your search service. You need to provide your 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 like key, key or and, something. Yeah. And then yeah. you will be able to just launch queries uh, um, towards that service. Like the the things I've did with um, the things I've did with count, select, and filter. You will see those all coming back within within that that NuGet package. So it's it's super simple to use. And uh, once you get rolling, uh, it's it's yeah, it's it's pretty straightforward actually. Got it. Do you? And I'm guessing. Is it similar in in how you do connection management in Cosmos, where you want to maintain like a singleton instance for the life of your application? I mean, it has all the same connection constructs, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah absolutely, uh, absolutely. That you would have in any kind of yep. thing where you're making a remote call uh, to some data store, or whatever, right? So, yep. yep. Okay. That's 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 right. How about uh, is there support for Azure AD like identity? Uh, any... um good question um i think it it really works with with that that key uh that you you have here mm -hmm. so it's uh so it's it's really based on the um the the api keys that you uh that you want to uh want to provide oh, but there. it seems to have an rbac in there can you go back yeah to the there? I... so there is some rbac going on in here uh oh might blow something up yeah <laughs> Manage query keys. Oh, interesting. Okay. I, I will see probably need to generate them there. after well, this. So you show, can right? run this. I'm guessing you can run this using some kind of managed service identity as well. You can have it run in a context of a of an identity in here. So, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Well, I had lots of questions. No worries. <laughs> so I've I've played around with this in the portal and connected the two. I've never. Uh, I've never actually written a uh, code or an app uh, to to use these things. So I'm, for me, this is uh, I'm learning something new here. Uh, and in some ways. Uh, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, you can. Um, so if I'm just, uh, you can create a, a demo app like from the portal itself. Oh, this is cool. Yeah. So let's. I can. Let's. You can start uh, doing doing some work here and then it will create a demo app for you and then it will uh, generate you an html page and then it's um it basically gives you a an, an example and and yeah as, wow as the, that's pretty fancy that's like a like a dynamic quick start almost uh, yeah absolutely. and and if we if we open that you can see here that uh it I don't know what files I've selected, but okay, you I, I've selected the wrong field for for the. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it basically <clears throat> show, show so shows you what. Um, uh, so this is out of the box, and with that, you you have your demo app ready to go. You can uh, immediately once you have created the service, once your data is in there, um, generate that demo app. And check out the code, and then you you're you're good to go. So this is a guess, <clears throat> straight up HTML page with some JavaScript behind the scenes, basically. Yeah. Is that yep. what it is? Yep. Okay. That's, that's All right. So and and that that's a pretty cool pretty cool um, uh, feature here. That is me. actually cool. I'm going to show that to my portal team and say, hey, we should go do that. That's a cool can we have that for uh, right? for either Cosmos DB? Uh, yeah, right. So uh, I mean, right now we just have these quick starts that are basically mm -hmm. like a simple to do app, or I think the new one we've got is like a little product catalog, which is very simple with some CRUD uh, operations and a simple query mm -hmm. on there. Uh, but it would be cool if you could uh, upload a data set and then have a little, basically a little builder uh, that just builds you a little thing. I mean, uh, actually, there is something coming very soon that could. Okay. We do just exactly what you're saying, but okay, very cool. I'm really excited uh, and loving what I'm seeing here. All right. Um, 
Yeah, I, I think I have some some uh, slides to wrap up. So we we've talked about Azure Cosmos DB, talked about the importance of of indexing um, partition key. We've talked a bit on uh, data enrichment, Azure Cognitive Search, and how to query them. So um, that's it for me. Um, uh, if you want to get started with uh, Azure Cosmos DB, just navigate to to this website. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, there will be some uh, links to um, integrating Azure Cognitive Search with Azure Cosmos DB uh, in, the, in the description. And if there's any questions after this show, um, feel free to reach out on Twitter where I rant about stuff you spend all your time is that what yeah. the... <laughs> uh, i'm somewhat the same way uh if you could tell if i'm not paying attention to twitter i'm somebody's actually got me busy working on something so uh, but i try to i try to keep uh, keep an eye on what's going on in twitter there. so uh hey this is great uh thanks for plugging our try cosmos experience there so People want to try Cosmos for free. You get 30 days for free. You yep. get a good chunk of throughput in there as well. Uh, you can try any of the APIs we've got. Even the new Postgres one, I think, is available in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and actually, if you want, you can. I think you can just keep renewing it uh, in there as well. And I know for a fact we've also got a new experience you can migrate from a try. So if you build something in there for free, you can actually go and migrate it into a paid subscription. If you oh want. wow, so wasn't the word? Yeah, yeah, I know it's something new we've just been working okay. on. Uh, it's hard to find, uh, but if you kind of click around enough, you'll see there's a, okay. it's actually a little banner at the top. It says, Hey, if you want to okay. upgrade, click here. Um, I'm, I've asked that we make that a big, bold, like big red upgrade button or something so people can <laughs> see it. But, uh, yeah, yeah we'll so. definitely check that out. Check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Right on Glenn. Hey, uh, this is great. I, like I said, I've not really gone deep on Azure cognitive search, uh, with mm -hmm. Cosmos. Uh, this was, uh, this gave me lots of ideas. So I want to go in and now start kicking the tires here. And I want to check out the NuGet package for this thing and uh, and start playing around with this thing. This is really great. And I think really uh, provides a lot of value for that scenario where you're talking about where you, you can basically do a lot of free, free, free text uh, type of querying or do other types yeah. of things that are just more complex than what Cosmos's query engine is really designed to do. Mm -hmm. uh, this really kind of opens that up for you, uh, for, for users and, and the workloads that they may be using. So, uh, this is great. Uh, thanks again for coming on and thank you folks for joining us this week. Uh, this is episode, what were we on? 23. Uh, so, uh, if you want to, you can go and check all of our past episodes, AKA MS slash Cosmos DB live TV. Uh, and go and binge watch all 73 now. And we're, well, you watch this one, so you can binge watch the other 72 uh, that are within there. Uh, <laughs> hey, join our user group. We do monthly meetups uh, every month. New speaker, cool topics. Uh, join the community, aka MS uh, Cosmos DB user group. Um, that's it for us uh, this week, folks. Uh, thanks again, Glenn, for joining us. Thanks for uh, having and me. Folks, hope to see you at Cosmos Conf. Uh, coming up here, what is it, March 28th. Uh, so join us for that. We're going to have lots of great live sessions, a ton of on-demand sessions. Uh, we've got a really great uh, event for you this year. So I hope uh, everyone uh, joins us for that. So Glenn, uh, good seeing you again. Uh, yeah. I hope someday to be back in Belgium uh, to yeah. enjoy my favorite uh, whiskey-infused beer, Carolus. Absolutely. Uh, uh, if you've not tried this, folks, you got to go to Belgium. Uh, I think everybody kind of knows it's the greatest country for beer, uh, but you got to go and try it anyway. So you'll you'll be convinced, just like uh, the rest of us are. So, uh, all right. Well, hey, thank you, Glenn, and thank you, folks. Hey, we'll see, see you, you next time, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs>